Shalom, we praise you, see our Bar Shem El Shai, Bar Shem El Rakar Kudash, double winners unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the whole full elect. It's Pai Allah. And um, uh, the title of this video will be determined upon upload. I've got a couple precepts, and I just want to build upon this precept here. I've been saying it for a hot minute. I've been meaning to do a video on it for a minute as well. And the Spirit has finally um, permitted that, Lord willing, for me to go in on it, uh, to edify the congregation, you know, whoever it's for. So, you know, because the time we were in, as um, the prophecies written inside of the Word accumulate, Arrive, you know the the when I say accumulate, they reveal themselves more and more. The veil gets pulled pulled back, as it tells you in the book of Corinthians. That we we basically speak through, um, look through a you know a, a a glass basically a looking glass. We see paraphrasing. It's like every time we the more we move forward in his faith, the more is revealed piece by piece all right and um we understand you know the skeleton of everything is going to come but it's being fleshed out as it goes along all right and um this is one scripture that's just been being away through the spirit in my mind because i can just see the the reality of this all right greater and greater me personally all right so let's get into it. It's Luke 17 and 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. All right? So it says, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Okay, and this is personified. It's just shown greatly dealing with the Novid Jab. All right, the Yab got everyone on their toes. And first and foremost, through the idea of that, it would basically make you, you know, immune to any form of disease, any, you know, succumbing to it and it being deadly. But then more so, you know, on a, on another level, for people to travel, all right? They didn't even bat an eyelid. They said, well, if we got to take this to travel, we're going to do it, all right? But this is you feeding into the beast, man. All right, and this is why the Lord said you cannot serve a man cannot serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and, and love the other. All right, and basically, he said you cannot serve the heavenly Father and Mammon. All right, not only what are you choosing over the heavenly Father, you're choosing Mammon. All right, because the things that have been outlined dealing with Novid, yep, for the moment. All right, the things that have been outlined is you may not be able to work, you may not be able to have freedom of movement. Basically, it'll make your life a lot more difficult. All right, but this is this is like the test run. All right, this is dipping a toe in the water with the elites. You know, the image of the beast leading on to to the mark, the karagma, whereby it's gonna the way it's gonna establish that you are not gonna be able to eat. All right, buy or sell, save he that has the mark. All right, the karagma, and that's basically the service of mammon. All right, what did what did when Satan came and tempted the Lord? What did he tempt the Lord with? With riches, rulership, dominion. All right, food, all things that basically fall under the banner of mammon, which only, as Satan spoke of, he said, all kingdoms are given into my hand. All right, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. That's because they're Satan's kingdoms, all right? And this is where it is. That's why the Lord said, What profit a man for him to sell his own to sell his soul to gain the whole world but lose it to but to uh to sell his soul, all right? And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Now how do you lose your life? All right? The way you lose your life is you basically come into this faith, all right? 
you basically make that sacrifice whereby you say, you know what, this life that I'm living presently, I'm going to sacrifice it all because the fashion of this world passed away. I've, I've found the truth. Like Matthew, the 13th chapter, tells you that a kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that found a um, you know, treasure in a field and then sold all he had to and bought the field and purchased the field so that he could get that, that treasure. And that's basically what you do. You made a, the utmost sacrifice, presented your body as a living sacrifice for the sake of obtaining the kingdom, all right? And that's done on this level we're doing it now, all right, by going out on highways and byways, in season, out of season, being instant in season, out of season, all right? And you have men that have actually died in the line of line of work, man, out there on the highways and byways and made their body a literal living sacrifice for the sake of the Lord and their testament to the Heavenly Father's power, all right? So I want to get a scripture, another scripture, in the book of Sirach, 41, all right? And this really personifies the dynamic of the two, you know, holding to the kingdom, all right, presenting your body a living sacrifice or holding to this world that we're in, all right? So this is Sirach 41 and 1. It says, O death, how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possessions. Yeah. If you're enjoy if you have people waking waiting at your beckoning call to do anything that you ask them to do, and when you wake up, anything is is um is within your reach. You could say, I want to jump up and go to the Bahamas. You could jump up and say I want to go to Cyprus. Jump up, say I want to go to Japan. You know, you could do the city break. You can do the the beach holiday. You know, you can do it all. All right. You could say I want to spend the night in the plushest hotels. I want to wear the most expensive um, garments. That's you know, living at rest in his possessions. All right. Unto a man that have nothing to vex him, and I have prosperity in all things. All right. So anything you put your hand to do. It succeeds, right? You're blessed within this world. Yea, unto him that is yet able to receive meat, all right? So basically, a man like that, why, you don't want to die. You want to do the abundance of things. Your thing is, tomorrow I'll do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do that, all right? Everything is at your, it's there, all right? You're able to do it all. Verse 2, or death, acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy. And unto him whose strength faileth, all right? So a man that is need of need, all right, and you're not strong in his kingdom, all right, or in your life, death is an acceptable sentence. All right? That's why in the book of Proverbs, the 31 chapter, 31st chapter, it says, um, give strong drink unto him that's ready to perish, all right? Why? <laughs> because for him to get through the day, he needs to swig on that your young man. He needs to drink some strong drink, all right, in hopes that, you know, it nullifies the pain, all right, that he's going through and allows him to get through another day, okay? So it says that is now in the last age. What age are we in right now? We're in the last age, all right? And is vexed with all things and to him that despair, despaireth and have lost patience, all right? And that's the, this is the, the life that we live. When you go into the book, uh, book of Deuteronomy, it speaks on the curses, man. All right, how uh, basically, when you wake up in the morning, you say how how wish it was night, and then at night you wish it was morning, and basically hoping that you make it from you know from the morning to the night, and from the night to the morning, because it'll be the the Lord said he'll make the the cloud brass to you. All right. Basically, your days will be dark, all right? You have heavy days upon this earth. No ease, okay? Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. Yeah, it's the fact of life. This is, it happens, all right? You're born and you die. Those are two things that are guaranteed in this life. Everything else is for the, is for the birds, man. It's, it's, it's. 
wherever I have, it's, it's a, when I say for the birds, more according to the will of the Heavenly Father. If he if he wills you prosper in your life, that's his will. If if you go through the hardship of life, then that's his will. But the best mindset that we ought to arm ourselves with is that of Proverbs the faith chapter, being that the I, I, it escapes me that the brother's name in that um author, authored the book. But he said that give me not riches that I forget thee, and not um poverty that I take the Lord's name in vain. Give but give me breath sufficient for me. Alright? Because really the Lord, you need to have your edge within this kingdom whereby you you know, you go through it that keeps you sharp and nimble and aware of where you are still. But at the same time, you can't have the abundance of things because what? Just run, wax fat and kick. Verse four. And why art thou against the pleasure of the most high? There is no inquisition in the grave, whether thou have lived ten or a hundred or a thousand or a thousand years. And I had a question posed to me by an individual that I reason with from time to time, you know, a friend within the world. And he basically said, Would you regret what would be your regrets if you died today or whatever? And my point I said to him was like, bro. If I die today, it's my time. Because I said, if if I feel some form of regret, that'd be to, to cowardice, whereby I I'll be scrambling, doing anything within my my need, within my power, to preserve my life, to avoid regretting, thinking that it's over. You know, I'm never gonna be able to do these things again. There'll never be a time like this. Like I want to do it, so I'll do whatever is in my power to preserve my life. And then within that, there's a power in that because and if you know that your time is your time is measured, you know that wherever you put your hands to do, you're gonna do it with all your might, because you know, and and it says the same thing in the book of Ecclesiastes, which I'm quoting, because there's no inquisition to the grave, for for, for how long a man lived, you gotta go hard, man, alright, and that's why we gotta go hard in his faith, that's why, our our thing is presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. All right. So now I want to move to this final scripture I want to read. All right. Because ultimately, what? He that loses his life shall preserve it. Okay. And the book, actually, I'll jump up to this scripture and go to the ultimate scripture I want to go to. So I'll bring it, so give it some um, content. All right. So it's the book of Revelations 2 and 10. It says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Right? And this is coming into the hour of temptation, which we're steadily heading towards the time of Jacob's trouble. All right? The hour of temptation is going to tempt the whole world. All right? But the time of Jacob's trouble is specific to us. Because when you see over the course of history, there's never not been a time where the children of Israel have been tempted and been tested of the Lord. To see whether the Heavenly Father's covenant would walk according to it. And it's really um, a continuation, you know, that's happened going back to the time of um, when you read it in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord said that He tempts us 40 days, the 40 years within the wilderness to see if we'll do the words of His covenant. All right? That's why different things happen while we was out in the wilderness, okay? And that's the same thing with 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 dealing with this when dealing with wisdom, right? The book of Sirach, the Sip chapter tells you, man, that wisdom isn't shown unto to everybody. Unto like a fool it'll be as a a bird of some stone. But unto the wise, it'll be like what? They'll put their, their fetter they'll bind themselves in the fetters and it'll turn into an ornament, it'll turn into a diadem upon their head and bracelets and a chain about that neck. All right, but that's that's why we've been tempted consistently to hold take hold of take hold of wisdom. So let me read this again: Revelation two and ten. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. All right, the devil's gonna cast some of you into prison. So man, we're gonna be thrown in the bin. All right, gonna have to do a, a bird, sit down. All right, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. 
All right, 10 days don't mean literal 10 days. You're going to throw up two tallies, you know, one, two, three, four, slash right through. I had just got five more days left. Now, 10 days is the perfect amount of time. It might be less than even 10 days. Maybe more, man. All right, but even so, let's read on. It says, be thou faithful unto death. So you may not even, the you, the time you leave that, that, that bin that you're in, that cage, all right, that lockdown, that prison, all right, what's going to happen? You're going to be moved to a point of you, you may be slayed and put to death. And I will give thee a crown of life. A crown, and I will I'll give thee a crown of life. All right? And that's what will happen. Now, we have to recall to my, and this is why I'm reading it, because in the book of Revelations, the sixth chapter, it speaks about the, uh, the men that were killed by the, basically, now let me read it. Revelation 6 and 9. Right, so it says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High, and for the testimony which they held. All right, so these are the same men that stood stiffly for the word of the Heavenly Father. All right, and that would take as the Lord prophesied, saying that you know you'll be brought before you know governors and you know councils for a testimony against them. All right, and he may be cast into jail, just like our Lord, Lord was, just like John the Baptist was. All right, he may be put to death. All right, but that was for the testimony. That's been shown in the history of the word consistently. Some men were saved, some men were given as an example for the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. Verse ten, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, "How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood?" On them that dwell on the earth, all right. That's it's the same thing. This is this is what happened to um, Abel, a ball, which means transitory, all right. This life that we're living is like a breath. It's you know transitory, here today, gone tomorrow, all right. And our forefather Abel, he did a righteous work and was slain by the wicked, all right. And then what did he do? He, his blood cried unto the heavenly Father. He complained unto him. And then the Lord confronted Cain because Abel complained to the Heavenly Father. This is the same thing we're doing right now, all right? You have men that are in the heavens right now complaining continually unto the Heavenly Father. Verse 11, and white robes were, man, I just, I just envisioned King Marshall. He's up there saying to the Most High, man, let's go down. Let, when are we going to get the green light, man? Let's go, Lord, you, you said we're going to, you know, He's getting on to the Heavenly Father and wants him to, to show his hand. All right. What is what does it say in the book of Psalms? Um the most high is angry with the wicked every day. All right. And King David was a man after the Heavenly Father's heart. All right. He he damn sure is angry with the wicked every day. There's another scripture that speaks to that. It's escaping me at this point in time. Lord willing, um I'll, I'll throw up the priest up someone can throw it up there. Verse 11, and white robes were given unto them, to, uh, every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. All right, so let me read this now. Back up the point and I'll go to my last point after. So there's a book of 2nd Ezra 15 and 8, and it reads, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. All right? How do the souls of the just complain continually? Up there in the heavens, as we just read, the spirits are before him, clothed in white, righteous, and they, they're saying to the Lord every day, man, let's go down there and tell these, Red Edomite, Edomite devil bosses up, man. Let's get busy on them, all right? They're more than ready to get come down. But then guess what as well, all right? The Lord, we were told through the Spirit, Paul said what? Pray without ceasing, all right? And the parable that Yahushai put forward, I forget the name of what, the verbatim what it's called, but basically the woman... Um, 
that wanted her to uh, enemy to be event to avenge her enemy Iraq for for an act that was done and was going on to the the, the judge that feared not man nor the most high power but she came every day onto him I believe and basically said like look man how long do you avenge my um my enemy and he this man didn't fear the most high on man but said look if I if I don't do it this woman's gonna keep coming. And he avenged, he basically said that he was going to do it. How much more so the Heavenly Father is going to do the same thing? And that's because why? We're praying without ceasing, all right? The more we keep getting onto the Heavenly Father and saying, like, look, Lord, come back, do something, the more he's going to do something, all right? And that's why the prayers of the saints is like what? Incense before, on the altar before the Heavenly Father, all right? He's seeing these prayers and he's, he's smelling them as sweet savour. That's she a beautiful thing unto him. So the heavenly father is going to come down speedily. Verse 9. And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge him and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So I'm going to finish with this scripture. In the book of Ezekiel, the 25th chapter. And the 12th verse, which reads. Thus saith the Lord power, Yahweh, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah but taken vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them therefore and this is it it names names alright Edom Edom it goes back to the Hebrew out of one which means red okay now red the 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 Edomites or the red people are the one goes back to Esau alright it's the only nation declared by colour alright and funnily enough this man is now rebranding himself as a so-called white man and named everyone by colour and removed their true identities away from them. Now, rightly so, this man is identified by colour because the colour red means caution. It draws your attention quickly. So this man, having been stripped of his, his melanin and having his blood show forth so that he pairs red and even in the sun being burnt red, is like a, a, a cautionary sign to everyone to say approach with caution, beware, all right? And that's why you get the word crimson that goes back to criminal and the term being caught red-handed because this man is the devil and the wicked and he's being caught red-handed in scripture right here because these are the, this is the main culprit, culprit in terms of the blood of the innocent and the just complaining unto the heavenly father. Just like his father, the devil, all right, Cain, did back then, he's doing now, all right, but on a greater scale. So I'll read it for again from the top of Ezekiel 25 and 12. I say, if the Lord Yahweh power, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, if I say, if the Lord power, Yahweh, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from him. And I will make it desolate from Teman, and they from the Dan shall fall by the sword. Alright? And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. So it's going to be done by the Heavenly Father putting his spirit upon Israel. Alright? And it ain't going to be done in the state that we're in right now. Nor is it going to be done with any weapons that can be found upon the earth. Why? Because that's the blessing of Esau, Edom. Alright? The sword is the blessing going back to the book of Genesis 25th chapter but guess what it's a, it's a double edged sword because he that lives by the sword basically will die like he that take up the sword shall die by the sword as the Lord told Peter after he smote of Malchus ear yeah. and this is what Esau lives by and he's going to die by because the great the thing that's given him power right as it tells you in Revelation 6 chapter that a great sword was given on to take peace from the sword from the earth. That sword was the ICBMs ultimately. Alright. You have many different forms of the sword, but the greatest means that established power was the ICBM, which is actually which is gonna be utilized to destroy him from off the face of the earth. Alright? So that's the main way, but the way by the children of Israel is gonna be headed by Yahweh Shai coming back, Isaiah sixty three, and Pressing upon Edom as if 
did a wine press, all right? And using concentrated fire being laser beams when he arrived on, on the, the UAPs, the unidentified aerial phenomena, so-called the chariots of Israel, right? And then the, the children of Israel are going to basically be endowed with spiritual power because that's the other side of the coin. And they shall do and eat them according to mine anger. So according to the Heavenly Father's anger, spiritual power, all right? His power being put upon, his hand being placed upon the children of Israel. And according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord, Yahweh. So with that, man, I pray to edify the next one. I say shalom, shalom.